Hi everybody, I'm Jill Woodward. I'm a registered dietitian and TRIO's corporate wellness specialist. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, as we get closer to fall, I wanted to make a very fall inspired recipe and to me that is chili. So we're gonna make a sweet potato black bean chili today um, as a way to get in extra fiber, reduce our overall saturated fat and just really bring out those fall flavors, which we all love. So the base of this recipe is sweet potato and black beans, as well as corn and some diced tomatoes. That's pretty much the base. I'm going to add in some additional plant-based protein in the form of quinoa for this particular chili. What really makes it chili is the flavors of that, right? So chili powder, cumin, all of those awesome chili-like flavors. But instead of having the meat as the base or the foundation for this recipe, we're actually using plants. That is a great thing for you because you're adding in additional nutrients, which you find in these really colorful vegetables. You're also getting a lot more fiber, which comes from vegetables. And you're also reducing your saturated fat content. So because we're eliminating the meat, we actually have a really low fat dish. So without that saturated fat, you're helping yourself reduce your risk of heart disease and lower cholesterol, all those great things. So let's jump into our recipe for today. There is a lot of cooking in this recipe and I have taken some of those steps out for you for the video, but just know I'll tell you when you would pause and go ahead and cook those items. So we're gonna start with two sweet potatoes that have been diced as well as one onion that's been diced. So you will dice up your sweet potatoes and your onion and you'll add them to a Dutch oven, which I have behind me on the stove top. You'll add about two or three tablespoons of canola oil or olive oil, add your diced vegetables and let those saute for about five to six minutes. They're gonna get nice and caramelized. It brings out a lot of awesome flavor. Once you have that done, then you're gonna add the spices as the next step. This brings out the aromatic effect of the chili, which is fantastic. And the smell is beyond. So I'm excited to show this to you and I can't wait for you to try it in your own kitchen. So I actually pre sauteed these vegetables for you. And now I'm gonna add in the spices. So we have two teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin and one teaspoon of smoked paprika. That smoked paprika really enhances the fall flavors of this dish and adds that smoky chilliness and you won't really miss the meat portion at all. So I've also added some chipotle chili. I have ground chipotle chili. And the reason I did that is for that sweetness effect. So it's not an overly spicy chili, but it does add great flavor. So I have all of those spices here and I'm gonna add them to the sweet potato onion saute. Now you would be doing this in your pan while it's cooking so that you can blend these flavors, these vegetables get nice and coated with the seasoning and that again sort of helps bring out all the flavors of the dish. So pretend I'm doing this on that stove top back there. So now you have all of those awesome veggies coated you're gonna add four cups of water and let that come to a simmer on your stove top. That will simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes and those sweet potatoes will get nice and soft. Here's a quick trick. The smaller you dice your sweet potatoes, the faster they will cook. So if you have skinny, small diced sweet potatoes, it may only take eight to 10 minutes. But if you have big hearty chunks, it's definitely gonna take longer. So be mindful of that. After you let that saute a little bit and it's been down in the juices with that extra water, then you're gonna add in the other ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my garlic, which I have about four teaspoons of garlic. Now, again, that sounds like a lot, but trust me in this recipe, it is the perfect amount. And you also wanna add it closer to this stage. And I'll tell you why. So. You, if you add garlic a little bit too soon or you saute that in the pan, you can actually bring out a really bitter off-putting flavor and you may overdo it. So if you're used to sort of pre-sauteing all of your garlic and then adding vegetables and all those things, try it the reverse and see what it does to the flavor. I promise you, you will enjoy it. So I've added in my garlic and my spices. This is all sauteing on the stove with all my water, okay? 
So now the last step is to add the rest of the ingredients and let that cook again for an additional five to six minutes. So I'm gonna add in, I have my corn and black beans. So I have two cans of black beans and one can of corn. Having them canned is mostly for convenience, but they do sometimes have extra sodium. So a great way to try to get rid of some of that extra sodium is by rinsing the black bean and corn before you use them. So I always put these in a strainer, rinse them really good with water, and then they're ready to go. So now they have a little bit less sodium. I wash some of that off and I can add them to my soup or chili that we're making. All right, so I have these guys going. And again, you're doing this in your Dutch oven all while it's sauteing and cooking on the stove. And you can see all of these great ingredients are coming together and making that really hearty chili base. You're getting a lot of extra fiber from those beans and sweet potatoes and corn. You're also getting some extra protein from those black beans as well. So then my next step is gonna to be to add in my cooked quinoa. So to cook quinoa, you're going to add uh, a one to two ratio, right? So one part quinoa to two parts water, and you can make as much or as little as you like. If you have a family member who loves quinoa, load it up. It also adds, again, additional protein, which for a meatless meal is going to help you feel full a lot longer. So I would encourage you to add some extra protein like this quinoa into this dish. Also, you're getting all that great... Um, super awesome fiber, which is helping you stay full too. So I've added about half of the quinoa that I made. So I had about two cups cooked. I'm gonna add in just one, mix this up and see kind of what this looks like in here. Um, and then add in a little bit more if it needs it. But I think we're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And then the last ingredient is the soft, um, diced tomato. So again, I just have a can of diced tomatoes. You want all the juices for this particular one, so I'm going to leave that one um, not drained. So I'll add those in as they are. Okay, so at this stage, you, are, you have about four additional cups of water as well. Remember, it's on your stove. And so you're cooking this, and it is going to saute again for another six minutes or so. And then to finish this chili, you're gonna add four teaspoons of lime juice. Now, please don't do this before the last step because the citrus here will really bitter this out and not make it that zing or that fresh finish that you want. So make sure you leave this for the very end, stir it in, and then get ready to serve. You also can top this with diced cilantro, which I think adds an awesome fresh flavor as well as just a freshness in general because fresh herbs bring out a lot of great flavor. And then you could also add, if you wanted, um, maybe a sour cream type topping. So you could do either sour cream or a plain Greek yogurt as an alternative. So all of this is hanging out in the Dutch oven, sizzling away, getting nice and married up, and these flavors smell fantastic. So I hope this dish brings you the sense of fall, which is definitely filling my home, and I hope that you really enjoy it. This is an awesome meatless chili alternative to give you great fall flavors any time of year. You can use this recipe, obviously, for a football Sunday if you wanted great, easy weeknight cooking, or you could also add it to a holiday table if you are uh, feeling like mixing it up. So it's a great option. And today we're serving it with a cheddar cornbread that we made in a separate video. So you can just watch that one as well for that cheddar cornbread recipe. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy today's sweet potato black bean chili.